Welcome to Type-C Tech Review. Today we're gonna to be unboxing this AOC monitor, but it's got something special. It is mini LED lit and very budget friendly. If at any point during the video you wanna check it out, there's Amazon links below, but let's get this thing unboxed. The specific model is the Q27G3XMN. This is mini LED lit. It's like 270 bucks, maybe 280. And the way they get it so inexpensive is while it still is legitimately mini LED lit with like 300 something zones and that's full array local dimming, they use a VA panel. So that's how they get this much, much cheaper and are able to actually produce this. But look at this, they have the color calibration report in a $280 monitor. That's very, very impressive. That'll be very interesting to actually uh, test myself, the color, which will be in the full review. This is just the unboxing boxing, initial impressions, gaming test, things like that. That video will be coming in a few days, so subscribe below for that. But let's get into the unboxing. This is not my favorite unboxing style where you pull it out, but well, this one's not too bad. All right, so you get the stand, which is quite interesting. What a funky looking stand. Uh, metal on the base, high quality thumb screw, which is nice. You get some rubber there. It's honestly kind of cool looking. It's very, very interesting though. Never seen a stand quite like this. You get some paperwork, a display port cable, an HDMI cable, and then you get the power cable here and it looks like this has an internal power supply, which I am a big fan of. All right, but with that, let's get to the panel itself. I'm assuming, yep, that you have the other height adjustable part down here and Wow, I'm actually really impressed. I've used quite a bit of AOC monitors before, and this is definitely the most polished like looking stand that they've made. This looks much more mainstream like Dell, Alienware. Cool red accents there. You have your cable management hole. This is a nice like smooth design, and it looks like this is going to look quite good together. Line those up, fit them in, and then just screw them in with the thumb screw. It's not a crazy heavy stand, but it feels high quality and I think it looks pretty good. The only thing here is that I wish these were the same color. This is kind of like a darker gray. This is like a lighter gray, which kind of makes it look a little funky. But with that, let's get to the monitor itself. I usually just rip this a little bit right there and that gives you access to the lock-in stand. So line in those top pieces and then press down and. There we go. Take the plastic off. This is actually a pretty thick monitor. And look at that. You get three year warranty. We did another AOC monitor with these warranties. If anyone has experience with these warranties, I haven't had any warranty claims on any of my AOC monitors, but if you have interacted with those warranty, leave them in the comment section below and I'll pin that so other people kind of understand the whole buying process and experience with AOC. But look at this monitor. It is thicker than your average monitor. Absolutely is. I think we have swivel, we do. Ooh, that is a large amount of swivel. Wow, that's quite impressive. So it's definitely thicker. Um, it's an attractive looking monitor from the back. A little bit cheap feeling, but again, it's about the panel here. For ports here, it's nothing special. Two HDMIs, one display port, and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and that's it. That's all you need though for this price point and what they're saying that they're gonna give you, I think that's, pretty worth it. So you have a massive amount of swivel. Ooh, very good amounts of height. Look at how low that gets. And that's all the way up. You have tilt, also a good amount of tilt. And then I believe we have full rotation. Yep. And it locks in, which I really like. And that goes both ways. So that is very, very impressive. Now, the only thing that I'm seeing right away that is a big con, which I don't personally like, but I'll swallow it if these specs turn out, is this menu system down here. It uses that four button menu system. I think it's the same as some of the other AOC monitors. It is absolutely horrible, but we'll see about that. But with that, let's get this thing turned on. We'll do initial impressions, gaming tests. We're gonna do a local dimming test and a ghosting test. The ghosting test is the most important here. That's what I believe to be the biggest possible red flag with buying this. If the ghosting's bad, it might not be worth it, but let's see, VA panels typically don't have the best ghosting, but. Let's see, I'm really excited for this one. All right guys, now sitting down, let's turn this on with the dedicated power button, which I don't mind, but I hate all of these four buttons here. All right, there we go guys. Right away, first impressions. Doesn't look like anything crazy because we haven't changed any of the brightness and I believe that it's kind of low. So there we have the input switching, uh, but we're gonna go back to the menu system. Ooh, this is a different menu system. This is kind of interesting. Um, I just used and reviewed an AOC monitor, but this is definitely a different Menu system, let's go into game settings. Uh, we have game mode, shadow control, game color. I'm not sure what game color is. We have adaptive sync. These are the overdrive settings. Uh, so we have weak, medium, and strong. I love it. Uh, we're gonna just keep it in off for now before we test that. 
uh, low input lag, frame counter, volume, pretty basic stuff. Let's go into luminance here and let's turn that, the brightness is at 70%, let's turn that all the way up. Ooh, that gets a, holy crap, that gets a lot brighter. I mean, that's impressive. Anytime you do mini LED lit, we always expect it, but that is very nice and bright and vibrant. I'm, so far, I'm very happy and impressed with the price, guys. So here are the different eco modes, which I think are just like picture modes overall. Uh, sports, reading, which is like a black and white uh, uniformity. Let's just leave this, um, let's just leave this in standard for now. Gosh, that is very impressively bright. We also have different gamma settings, DCR, we have HDR, which this can actually do HDR. Local dimming right now is off. So when you get this, if you get this monitor, absolutely go into the menu system. I know some people uh, never actually do that. Let's turn it on strong just for now because that's a big reason why we like this monitor. We have color setup, color gamuts, we have the color temperature. So this is what we're all gonna go through in testing. Hopefully this is actually changing the right things that we can actually go in and make adjustments um, so that I can give you guys some numbers if you don't have a color calibrator. So there's a lot of settings here, which is a good thing because a lot of times AOC sometimes does not do the best job with their OSD. So this is actually better. Obviously we're gonna have to do a full test uh, in the review. I'm gonna go through everything and see if the settings are actually legit because sometimes they do settings that kind of don't do anything. Uh, but I'm really impressed so far. This looks great. We're gonna go in, this is a contrast ratio test and we'll be able to see the local dimming working here. However, this room is very, very bright. So we are going to turn off the lights. So my face and all of the lighting is gonna be kind of bad, but it's really about testing the panel. So that's what we're gonna do. All right guys, so with this up here now, I am seeing a little bit of blooming, obviously to be expected. Um, there's a little bit of blooming there. Um, the blacks look nice and deep. We are gonna go straight into a black screen to see how it's actually affected um, sometimes they, yeah, so it's gonna totally, it's gonna do a one step further and just dim the entire display. But I wanna see when we pull that white over. So we can see some bloom right here, okay? So there's not a massive amount of dimming zones. So you can see the dimming zones reacting right there. See how the white kind of flashes a little bit. Hopefully that comes up on camera, um, but still very, very impressive. You can see the pointer over here gets very, very dim. And then as I'm bringing this over here, you can see the local dimming zones working. It's kind of fluttering a little bit, and then right here it's getting brighter. Um, and then over here it's full brightness. So yeah, the dimming zones do a pretty good job. Obviously in the full review, I'm gonna go through the settings and see which one of those local dimming settings is actually going to work best. But let's jump into NVIDIA control panel. Let's make sure this is outputting full res and refresh rate. So right now we're in 2560 by 1440p. We're outputting 170 hertz. Before we go into 180, let's see if this can output 10 bits of color. It looks like it can. So we're gonna go right into 180 hertz set this to 10 bits of color. And yeah, it's gonna output 10 bits of color and 180 hertz, which is full refresh rate. These are impressive specs. Obviously there's a VA panel, so when you go to the side, there's gonna be color shift, but honestly, the viewing angles look a lot better than your average VA panel. I can be sitting here and it still looks very, very good. It doesn't wash out that much. Um, whereas some VA panels, you just go a little bit to the side, it's washing out a lot. So overall guys, I am highly impressed with this monitor for the price. I mean, yeah, it's, it's very impressive. Let's jump in game and see how this thing does. Before we do that, I wanna do a ghost in the because that's really what I am most interested in. Okay, so let's check here. We're getting some ghosting. There's for sure some ghosting there. Not anything absolutely insane, especially for a VA panel, but I'm gonna go into the gaming settings and hop in these overdrive settings and see what that's gonna change. So we're in weak. Let's go into medium. That decreases it a little bit. Then let's go into strong. This is the best. Okay, looks like maybe a hair of pixel overshoot Shooting, but honestly not bad. Uh, looks like medium is the best. And typically with VA panels, if you can see, I'm gonna take the camera so I can show you what I'm seeing. If you can see on the lighter, on the lighter background colors, we're getting very, very little ghosting, if any, like a very, very small amount. In those darker, that's where you're really gonna get ghosting. That's more common with VA panels with that very, very big difference between lighter and darker colors. IPS panels, typically it's a little bit more uniform, but honestly, I'm impressed, guys. For this price point, all the specs, this is still performing extremely well. But with that, let's hop in game and see how this thing does. I'm very excited. All right, now guys, initially for the test, I'm gonna put this thing in HDR and we're gonna see how it does because obviously this is a true HDR capable monitor. So let's do it. Battlefield 1, baby. All right, guys, jumping right in game. Initially, the first thing I notice, this monitor is absolutely maybe the most beautiful monitor I've ever seen at this price point. I mean, 
The colors look really good. We're in HDR, obviously, so we're taking full advantage of the color gamut. I think it's not crazy wide. I haven't fully deep dive looked into all the specs, but we're definitely getting a wider color gamut than just the sRGB color gamut here. It looks great. I mean, the darker areas here with the brighter there is, is pretty awesome. We are in HDR right now, and we're not getting any like blowing out, which is really impressive. I mean, the clarity here is quite impressive. Getting kills, okay, right at the end of a game, but wow. I mean, wow, that is impressive. Uh, I don't know how I didn't immediately know about this monitor. Uh, we just saw it the other day on Amazon and I was like, this seems like it's gonna be a crapshoot because these specs are way too good. I mean, initially guys like, no, the ghosting is not that bad. The brightness is absolutely fantastic. HDR out of the box looks pretty good. We are getting some weirdness there. I don't know if you saw that. We got a little bit of weirdness going on with flickering. Uh, with some colors. I don't know if that was the game or the monitor. That'll be tested in the full review, but I mean, so far, oh my God, I am like really impressed here. Even just this picture looks really good. The colors look good. This could be the single best budget gaming monitor of all time currently. Like I'm really impressed and excited to go deep dive into the full review. This is amazing. I mean, just walking through this trench right here, it is a very, very pretty. The, the clarity of this panel, I'm also really impressed with. Even in the whites here, while this is a matte finish, you're not getting a crazy amount of that dirty screen effect because of the matte finish. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed, honestly. The beauty of this panel, I can't get over. It. Definitely seems like the gamma should be uh, changed slightly. Um, so we could use some, uh, some changing with the gamma, but that's also fairly common to have in HDR, where usually your gamma needs to be switched up a little bit. That's, that's just how the industry is. Uh, but wow, I am really impressed here with how good this panel looks. Obviously, right with these darker colors, yes, we're getting a little bit of ghosting there, but gosh, for a VA panel at this price point with all these other specs, I mean, it's not even close to as bad as I was expecting, like multiple times better. So that is very, very impressive. So guys, overall, again, if you wanna check it out, there's Amazon links below, but my full review will be coming in a few days where I'm gonna go deep dive, do tests, and see if this thing is worth it. But honestly, right away, I mean, like, it's stupid good for the price. Just having local dimming, a true HDR experience, exceptional brightness, it's, it's very, very impressive. And for the price point, it just doesn't seem like you can go wrong even if there are maybe some problems with flickering, I'm gonna go in and test that. But so far, this is, this is very exciting for me uh, because I'm huge on value propositions with the monitor industry and gosh dang, this just seems like a monitor that's $500. It really does seem like that experience. But yeah, all right, again, if you wanna check it out, links below, four of you coming in a few days, so subscribe for that. But this is Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.